the second day's play of the Cornhill Test at Old Trafford. The first day, I suspect, might have produced a few sleepless moments for the England players. They didn't have it all their own way yesterday. Certainly, it was one of the most dispiriting efforts they've put up so far this summer. 135 all out, and in reply at the close of play, West Indies had reached four for no wicket. All those four runs, scored by Gordon Greenwich. His batting partner was Richie Richardson, and plenty of batting to come. The West Indies 131 behind, and four for no wicket as play began. We pick it up now in the second over. Three runs had come from John Embury's first over. Graham Dilley is the man coming into bowl, and he's bowling to Richie Richardson. <laughs> oh, a lovely shot. Next up, half volley. Only one answer to that. Well, that's the point we just made about Richardson. He can play some flashing so shots off the quicker bowlers, and uh, not much better than that. He just strayed a bit down the leg side, did Dilly, but he certainly whipped that away for four. And this outfield is very wet at the moment, so tremendous power there. Tremendous power there. Well, that's well bowled. Squared Richardson up and left him. Luck with the batsman. Greenwich coming for the third. <laughs> Dilly to Greenwich. And there's another half volley. Not hit with quite the same timing as Richardson managed. There'll just be three in it. Already ten runs off the over. This is just one of the things that England didn't want this morning, the ball flashing all around the outfield. Did it again, just strain off that leg stump and a half volley length. And Greenwich is very quick, he doesn't miss many half volleys or short ones. He likes to hit the ball harder than this man. That's Gordon Greenwich's answer to that. Yes, Gordon Greenwich won't allow the bowlers to dominate him. He'll want to break out of uh, these close fielders. That was almost the same delivery that he padded up the ball before, but using his feet, he got down. He just lifted it a little bit. Possibly being just that yard straighter than Embry might want to get out to it. Dilly to Richardson. Oh dear me, this just really isn't the sort of stuff that England need. We need to run. Oh, Dilly again, straight down that leg side. That would certainly have missed leg stump and Richardson very quick to pick it up again. Another half volley and another four runs. Different part of the ground, but really this is disappointing stuff from Dilly. Yes, it was another full half volley. And Richardson again, very quick onto it. The ball just running in all the time at the moment. Dilly not getting the ball to move away as he at Lords. And possibly he's not finishing his action off properly or something just like that. Uh, pushing it in with his arm, not getting his shoulder around. But certainly he's not getting the ball to hold on that off stump and go away as he did at Lords. A bit tense, a bit anxious, nothing to play with. Oh well, now then, he'll be disappointed in that. Not a great way for England to get a wicket, but anything acceptable at this stage with West Indies threatening to run the mark. And Richardson, who's gone for his shots right from the word go, helping Dilly to his first wicket. 35 for one, Richardson out for 23. Well, that's certainly a bonus wicket for England. Uh, basically, that was really a long up on this wicket, halfway down, and 
Richardson just slightly above it, getting the bottom edge and down to the stumps. And really, John Embry wants to be sent to deal now. Come on, you've got that little bit of encouragement. Get your teeth into it and get bowling, because he hasn't bowled this morning yet. And that's a little bit of bonus for him on there. Hooper, the new batsman, so Bill Richards staying in the position he likes best at four. Simply the lack of pace, really, which got Richardson through the shot before the ball had arrived almost and just able to help it down onto its down onto the stumps. Just giving Greenwich room enough for one of his favourite cuts. Hooper turning it into three. Now Dilly. That's a better ball and very lucky indeed Greenwich to get away with that. Bad luck to Graham Dilly, the ball skewered off the shoulder of the bat, it seemed. Went over the top of where third or fourth step might have stood went for four. That really took off uh, from the length, and uh, Gordon Greenwich having a look at the pitch there. You see how high this hits on the bat. Goes right off the shoulder, the corner of the shoulder, and high over third slip. And 50 up for West Indies. To be John Childs to bowl his uh, debut ball in Test match cricket. Lots of uh, good luck wishes out on the field there for him and round the country as well. Maybe 36 years of age, but every cricketing mother's heart will go out to him at the moment. Replacing Philip De Freitas at the Warwick Road End, John Childs. Be an enormous relief. <laughs> You're fairly by Freitas. Well, well enough. He saved the four. Now Hooper picked up an extra one. He was going to get the single anyway. Hooper certainly uses his feet well to the spin ball was. Down the wicket very quickly there to Charles and pretty well stopped there by De Freitas. It was going very hard that, so it saved a couple of runs. A slow ball from David Cable, beautifully clipped away by Greenwich. Cable trying the slower delivery, but unfortunately not pitching it. Going down the leg side and on the full toss. And Mr. Greenwich doesn't miss many of those. Thank you very much. Four runs. Now John Childs. Ball to Carl Hooper. Well, my yeah. word, that's out. And there's the wicket for John Childs. Marvellous start. Third over in Test cricket, and the leave alone shot. So no wonder Mike Gatting's looking pleased. 77 for two. Carl Hooper out for 15. And what a dream come true. John Childs slanting that one in, and really a 
dreadful piece of judgment by Hooper, letting that go. Would have knocked the middle out. Be interesting to see uh, what uh, Vivian Richards does about this, really. He's known as a slaughterer of slow bowlers. And if he sees any danger in Charles, I'm sure he'll be after him from the word go. <clears throat> that one turned and bounced. Now, what does that do to the great man? Well, I don't think he'll be coming down the wicket quite so often. That turned, lifted, bounced, it did everything. Another one turning. Luck with the batsman there, Richard's going for two. How long will it be before John Embry reinforces that offside well, field? This turning, you can see that, but Viv Richards right forward, bat angle down. That's a lovely shot. The goal, the full length half volley to Greenwich, that's what happens. Charles, they've put a bat pad man in on the offside, but it's still only a 5 4 split field. There's gaps there, oh my word. That nearly found the gap in Richards's defence. Well, unusual to see uh, Viv Richards really have a slash at this. Much too close to the off stump to play that shot. Now then, it's Philip De Freitas from the Stratford end. That's close, as it certainly is, that's well bowled. Greenwich goes, to Freitas is struck. Ball darting back off the seam. Didn't seem to me that Greenwich got forward at all, but so that uh, front foot was almost stuck, just a, a little movement in front of the crease. Well, Greenwich has had his share this morning of LBW shouts and got away with them. On that occasion he didn't, and really can't see too much wrong with that. Hit him about knee high, didn't really get forward, just in front of the popping crease, and the ball just really angling in. That's four runs, and it went in the air. Richards kept it between Gower and the man out at uh, long off. But uh, it was certainly a catchable height. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. It was a good length, good line, a bit of spin on it. And uh, Richards was a little bit across it, but uh, he managed to get it through that gap. But it was always about catchable height, head eye. Great to cover. Pick the link straight away. Defreitas now to Logie.
slashing stroke from Richards, but uh, it was one of the few very short balls John Charles has bowled. Tremendous stroke this by Viv Richards. Short, all the time in the world to get back and smash out through the covers. stroke and a little kiss of the bat there for Viv Richards. There must have been some apprehension there as the ball was going towards the fielder. Yes, he didn't middle this. He was hitting that over mid on. He got a very thick outside edge, but he's such a strong man that that just cleared long off. taking Dilly on and winning it comfortably. Two runs, that's the 150 up for West Indies. Just two slips, the rest of the field is defensively deployed. Well, not defensively enough for a shot like that off a ball like that. Four runs. and uh, remarkable shot this really but he's a remarkable player well things now starting to just fray at the edges for England Partnership now starting to look very dangerous. And that's bowled him. And David Capel has bowled him. Well, Viv Richards there, 47. West Indies now 175 for four. The end of a partnership which added 74. And starting to take the game right away from England. Viv Richards undoubtedly playing for T. David Capel breaking through. He's gone across, and he's leaning back, just chops it down and it hits the leg stump. A real bonus for England, that. A bonus indeed, and for David Capel as well. Richard's out for 47, and seven more added to take the total up to 182 for 4T. Logie and Dujon, the dangerous men, they're the ones who did such a good job for West Indies at Lords. Partnerships of 130 and 131. The bowling figures for England... Well, they've worked hard out there. It's been a case of whittling away at the West Indies. Dilly, one wicket, and one also to De Freitas, Capel, and John Childs. What a great moment it was for him. 12 overs, two maidens, and one for 45 in his first spell. So, T on the second day of this third Cornhill Test. West Indies, 47 runs ahead, and with six wickets in hand. We pick up play now in the second over after the T interval. No runs have been added. John Embry is the bowler. Gus Logie is taking strike. And that's a magnificent stroke through the extra cover boundary there. Perfectly timed. Everything right about the stroke. Foot to the ball. Perfect follow through and a perfect finish. Absolutely perfect balance there. Straight one from John Embury. And uh, I think Jeff Dujon realized just in the last fraction of a second that it was the straight one. He was in trouble. 
Well, that's got to be very, very close. John Embry looking a bit disappointed there. There's Dully to Logie. to Graham Dilley, Das Logie, this time can't share that great partnership with Jeff Dujon as was done at Lords. Logie goes, Dujon may have been lucky in the last over but not Logie that time. Yes, guess Logie looking to fall over a little bit here, straightish ball about off the middle, looking round about middle and just got a little bit too far over, the bat haven't come across the line there a little bit. Batsman is Roger Harper, brought back into this West Indies side. The Old Trafford Test match. Gus Logie, OBW to Graham Dilley. And Logie was uh, trying to get his leg out of the road, perhaps out of the umpire's view after he struck. I and mean, that does look very, very plumb. And then he tries to thrust that uh, left pad out as far as he can. But it's a fairly ungainly thing, and it did look... Uh, very, very out. He yeah, has a little bit of a guilty conscience there from Logie, trying to get out of line. But uh, I'm afraid the umpire beat him to it. Graham Dilly now, rolling to Dujon. Super shot from Geoffrey Dujon, who rather favours that stroke off the pads. Graham Dilley's drifted down that side a few times today. He's been off the field, probably got a little bit of back trouble. And uh, that's probably means he's not quite finishing the action off properly, and that just lets him drift down that right side. Isn't it? straight along the ground oh my goodness me deceived in the length it kept a little bit low not unlike uh, the one that bowled cable well chased by John Childs Three to Roger Harper, and the players will go off now. There's a heavy shower scudding across the ground. Umbrellas are up. The covers are coming on, and the players are going off. And that was the first time the players were off the field for weather after tea. In fact, later they were to go on and off several times, and finally the West Indies finished at 242 for five. Dujon is playing very well. He looks to be in ominously good form again. 35 not out and Roger Harper brought into this side in place of the injured Desmond Haynes is 23 not out and that is a very valuable partnership the bowling figures for England Dilly finished up with two for 50 and Defratus, Capel and Childs a wicket each and at the close of play which had gone on until just after seven o'clock this evening the West Indies 107 runs ahead 242 for five well, there were a lot of good things happened today. There was some good, tough cricket played out there. But uh, there was one incident which will have caught the eyes and the minds and the hearts of everyone around the country, anyone who's made their debut in any sort of cricket match. It was John Childs taking his first wicket in Test Match Cricket. 